Dodgers are celebrating 50 years of baseball in beautiful Southern California, and they play host to the St. Louis Cardinals game two of a three-game series here at Dodger Stadium awaits us. The Cardinals have been very good against the Dodgers, 23 and 8 since 2004, and we're just about ready to get underway here at Dodger Stadium. Rick Horton along with Al Roboski, our Ford Keys for this matchup here tonight is, of course, our starting pitching. Two very capable pitchers, but both of them struggling a little bit, particularly in the month of May. Kyle Loesch has had the problem with one inning, lack of concentration. It gets away from him, and it becomes a multiple runs. And you can say the same thing about Brad Penny. Usually it comes early for this guy, and he's one of the best in the league. All right, Al, the Cardinals have a chance to have a very good road trip here in Los Angeles, and it begins with those starting pitchers. Kyle Loesch taking the mound, but he's got Kyle McClellan in the bullpen. Our Brent Stover visits with the right-hander after this. Welcome back to Dodger Stadium. Kyle McClellan joins us. And Kyle, this bullpen on this road trip has really been lights out. It's uh, got to be a lot of fun for you guys. Yeah, it's always good when you're doing well. Uh, so we just keep keep focusing on that and uh, keep trying to put up zeros. How much of it is a confidence issue and not wanting to be the weak link out there? I, I think that has something to do with it. I think we push each other well out there. And, um, and you know, there's there's expectations in, in the bullpen. You know, we're, uh, we're a tight family out there, and so you don't want to let the other guys down. So I think that has something to do with it. But also uh, going out there and putting up zeros, I mean, that there's nothing like it. All right, you're a young guy. Who's the guy in that bullpen you look forward most to seeing day in and day out? Can you pick a guy? At the field or, or At the field. pitching? <laughs> um, man, Russ, I mean, Russ Springer has been my guy. Uh -huh. But sometimes I don't like to see him because he yells at me. And, uh, you know, if I do something wrong, he'll, he'll you know, reprimand me. But, uh, you know, all those guys, it's, it's enjoyable to come to the field, and, and uh, we're a bunch of clowns out there, and, and we keep it, you know, uh, loose and have fun out there. But, you know, the, everybody in that bullpen is, is um, you know, good pitchers and great people, and it makes it enjoyable to come to the field. Has it been fun to watch Chris Perez to this point? Yeah, absolutely. I played with Chris last year, and I told these guys before he came up that, uh, you know, through the minor leagues, this, this guy has the best stuff that, that I've seen that I've played with, and hands down, I mean, uh, the way he comes out and lights up the radar gun and his slider and curveball, uh, he's exciting to watch, and, and I'm glad for him that uh, he's been successful at this level as well, and hopefully, you know, continues because uh, if he does well, then we do well. Kyle, appreciate the time. Thanks. No problem. Kyle McClellan out of the Cards bullpen. Hopefully, they can keep it going, and we'll go to break from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Cardinals baseball on FSN Midwest. Nineteen eighty-five was a magical year for the St. Louis Cardinals. Tom Needon, if you were on the mound, Jack Clark, Al Roboski did some damage. Why did they pitch to Jack Clark in that situation? Tommy Lasorda has an answer, but I don't think anybody buys it. Well, Pedro Guerrero was wondering that same thing in left field. The Cardinal, of course, celebrating at home plate, and that's one of the things about this rivalry: the Dodgers and the Cardinals, both classy organizations with a lot of history. Well, you know, the Cardinals do have the advantage right now, but I can remember. 10, 15 years ago when one or two games separated these two great organizations. Well, they're certainly great organizations. They're getting ready for game two here from Dodger Stadium. Our pitching matchup, Kyle Loesch and Brad Penny. It's Cardinal Baseball, and it's coming up next from Dodger Stadium. Cardinals baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light Lime, the superior drinkability of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. By Auto Tire for the lowest prices in town with 26 locations to serve you. You ought to go to Auto Tire, the tire pros. By Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. By Geico Direct, a 15 minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines, you're now free to be more productive. Visit southwest.com today. Tony La Russa and the St. Louis Cardinals getting ready to battle the Los Angeles Dodgers on another chilly night here in Los Angeles. Joe Torre, the first year manager of the Dodgers, will face this Cardinal lineup. And you've always got to talk, Al, about that guy in the third spot. Well, Albert Pools, 22 games at Dodger Stadium, over 300, four home runs. But you know he is a monster wherever he plays. And the Cardinals winning the first game of the series. 
going to have to win this second game against uh, one of the best in the league. He's our Rico starter, Brad Penny. Ten starts, a very high ERA for him at 5.34. Last couple of outings have really been shaky. Yeah, it's month of May hadn't been kind to him, and they said early in early in a game he's kind of lost concentration. Cardinals throwing a few left-handers against the right-hander Brad Penny, and Skip Schumacher is the first one sporting a 3.05 batting average. Schumacher has been pretty streaky this year, and when he's on a good streak, he's really hitting the ball well the other way. There's a bouncer up the middle. Gobbled up by who? And that's how our game begins. Here's the auto tire defense for the Dodgers. Well, Pierre, Kemp, and Ethier are out in the outfield. DeWitt, who, Kent, and Loney are at, in the infield. Martin, who won the gold glove last year, is back behind the plate catching Brad Penny, who's 2-4, 4.25 4 ERA against the Cardinals. He was third in the Cy Young balloting a year ago. And he deserved it. 16-4 and four was his record. Very low ERA. He's got the good overhand curveball, and that's how he starts off Chris Duncan, who gets the start in left field. Well, Duncan has very good numbers against Penny, so that's why he gets the start. But, you know, Schumacher was 4-5 for five the other night. A great catch. He didn't play yesterday. Ludwig's the hitting star last night and he comes up empty tonight how hard do you to, figure hard to keep him out of the lineup isn't it? well it's hard to keep him out but uh, as I said Duncan is 571 with a home run against uh, Penny Schumacher's never faced him either as uh, Ludwig and Ankiel is over three but he messed that extended playing time with a bum shoulder when I think of Brad Penny, I always think about his all-star performance two years ago where he struck out the side in the first inning. He's got the good fastball. Thought he had a strikeout there because he doesn't get the call from Jerry Lane, our home plate umpire, but he can rack up the strikeouts. Yeah, a big, big, strong, and two-time all-star. He is there. a horse, isn't he? Yes. Duncan fouls off a fastball. Penny began his career as a Florida Marlin, but has excellent numbers as a Dodger. Won 16 games in 06 when he was an All Star and 34 starts. And again, the 16 and 4 record last year. You see the very good curveball. Penny not only has that very good fastball, but he has a good curveball and a splitter. Count now full to the Cardinal left fielder Chris Duncan. Albert Pujols awaits on deck. You don't really want to walk somebody in front of Albert, but Albert was walked in front of Ryan Ludwig yesterday. I'm not sure you want to do that anymore either. The 3 2 pitch is swung and missed. And that takes care of Chris Duncan. That's the first strikeout for Penny. Penny lists his 6 4, 260. Yeah, every bit of that, if not more. Albert's had a nice career against Penny as well. 12 for 30 with a home run. Of course, Albert has hit a lot of pitchers at the 400 clip in yeah. his career. I think you find the exception is who hasn't he hit. <laughs> Al Roboski. Well, that's true. You know what? We're probably the only two pitchers that <laughs> never have given up a hit to him. Only because we haven't had the opportunity, and I'm thankful hey, for hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. Don't, don't get into, <laughs> you know, Half truths are okay. <laughs> okay. All right. One and zero to Albert. Did you Good notice swing it, there. Didn't you notice it's better. You know, the longer you're retired, the better you become. I'm sure there's a lot of those kind of conversations going on here at the ballpark today, as the Dodgers are honoring their teams from the '60s. It is the 50th anniversary of the Dodgers being here in Los Angeles, and. Yeah. Tonight they've got a number of players that that you and I know Al and it's great to see them. some of them former teammates but uh, Ron Fairley you know uh, Wes Parker Garvey Mudcat Grant Kim McMullen the one one Albert is a fastball and that catches the inside corner Roy Gleason and I'm sure those guys like being 
here at the ballpark and having a chance to watch Albert play. Yeah, Claude Osteen. Well, I saw Wes Parker and, and Albert talking for an extended period of time. Looked like Tony was talking to Wes Parker and then Albert came over. He called him over. Wes Parker noted as one of the best fielding first basemen in history. Right. Wonder if they were talking defense. And there were a couple of guys running around that, you know, were new Tony in his rookie a year. 2 2 pitch is fouled off. Tommy Davis, sweet uh, Lou Johnson, Maury Wills, Steve Garvey. Tim Leary was here today, former teammate of mine. Dr. Tim Leary? Not that Tim oh. Leary. <laughs> Wrong Tim. He Leary. was kind of, he, he noted, was noted. Figured you'd remember him. He was noticed for uh, discovering three initials. Ball hit on the ground to the right side and. Brad Penny is going to have an easy first inning here as game two of the three game series is underway. No score from L.A. Kyle Loesch getting ready for the top of the order for the Dodgers here. And this is a young lineup, but they've got some pop in the middle of that lineup in Jeff Kent. Now, Kent is a future Hall of Famer when you see those 369 home runs, the most ever by a second baseman. Not all of them hit as a second baseman, but the majority. It's our Southwest Airlines starting lineup for the home Dodgers, and Juan Pierre will lead it off. The average at 275. Keep him off base. 18 stolen bases. Watch out. If that goes one way, the ball goes the other and Kyle Loesch is our Rico starting pitcher 10 starts on the year the 4.71 but he's not won a game Al since April. Yeah late April the 27th of April he's had two losses and two no decisions and a lot of it's been one inning he's kind of a lot got distracted they say they want to keep him very aggressive tonight attack hitters control the strike zone and the strike count. Ahead in the count now, one and two to Pierre. We mentioned his speed. There's some other Dodgers that can run a little bit. Matt Kemp, who hits sixth in the lineup, has 10 stolen bases. This is a club with speed and not much power. Well, Ricky, you know, when you get a guy like Juan Pierre, there's no power. You just try and elevate the ball, make him hit it in the air, preferably to center field. His asset is running, so don't let him hit down on a ball where he can utilize his running speed. Pitch him away, play him away. And there's strike three on the outside corner as Loesch blows away. Juan Pierre, let's look at our auto tire defense behind Kyle Loesch, anchored by Yadier Molina, who perhaps should have won the gold glove behind the plate. Rick Ann Keel getting the start in center field. And Schumacher and Duncan. Interesting to me the miles, you know, I mean, we, we keep on hearing that he's not that accomplished at a shortstop and Brendan Ryan, that's his best position, but uh, Brendan's on the bench and miles is playing short. Chris is trying to get his bat in the lineup somehow, somewhat. Here's a bat the Dodgers like Andre Ethier. The power is still not there, but Mike Eastler told us that he thought thinks that at some point the power will come for this left hander. And that was interesting the conversation we had with him where several of the guys he feels that they will to get older and more accomplished as hitters that they will discover their power. And Dodgers trying to load up the left handers against Loesch. Lefty's hit nearly 300 against him. If you're a talented young player. You're ahead in the count two and one. Like to see Loesch get off to a good start. It was really the hallmark of the Cardinals starting rotation in the month of April. A lot of zeros in the first inning. And even the second inning and that differential out in the first couple of innings has really been a been a plus for this Cardinal team all year. Yeah a year ago it seemed like uh, every time the Cardinals if they were home or on the road the offense was trying to battle back and get back into a game this year. Up, the starting pitch is thrown up zeros. 2 2 pitches laced in the left field, and that's our first hit of the ballgame as Andre Ethier 
takes that pitch up and away and hits it right where it's pitched. How about those Dodger dogs? Well, I know Dan knows my story, but have you had a Dodger dog? Oh yeah, let me tell you about the first one. I don't I know had. your Dodger dog. Oh yeah, they're it's, famous, it's, it's of course. They're the, best, they're the best dogs in all of baseball. Well, I'll let you. Of the Dodgers I'll let say you uh, determine that after okay. I tell you a story. My first major league game was at the Coliseum, watching the Dodgers sitting in right field bleachers and. There'd be 70, 80,000 people at those games. Would there could not? be, could be, and, and you were one of them. Yeah, and Duke Snyder hit a home run, and I jumped up with excitement like everybody else, and I threw up my Dodger dog. <laughs> so you still think they're they're good? I think I've had Edible? my last one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad I know that story now. Yeah, I mean now, every time you get a Dodger dog, you'll. I'll think that. of you, Al, in the Coliseum, Russell Martin. Count even at one on him at 3.11 batting average. He was the Gold Glove Award winner last year, despite 14 errors that they made behind the plate and leading all in all baseball in the number of stolen bases that he allowed. And more than 80 <laughs> stolen bases, well, yet he was the Gold Glove winner. Yeah, and and you know Molina had the broken wrist or hand, so that you know, missed about a month, and that probably cost him. But why is it? Managers and coaches vote on the gold gloves and they always look at the offensive numbers more so than the defensive numbers. The one defensive thing that you would say is in his favor, he's just a young catcher, Russell Martin, but he did catch 145 games, and that does count for something to mention Molina being out. But we've got two good catchers in this game. One two pitch misses. Count evens and, at two. And right now between the two of them, they have nine errors. Molina had another one last night. So last he's got night. five and Martin has four already. And that's very uncharacteristic from the audience. Ethier does have two stolen bases. Ball hit on the ground, sharply passed a diving Aaron Miles. It almost looked like he didn't get a good jump on that, that he didn't see the ball. The ball just tailed away from him, and that's going to be back to back hits now for the Dodgers. Here in the first, and Jeff Kent will hit with runners aboard. Now you talk about those guys from the 60s who always squared up to a ball and here she said Miles was shocked to that the velocity of that ball and played it to the side and it gets by him. I don't Not know if he would have. Yeah, right. I don't know if he would have made it, but the way he went after it, he wasn't uh, in front of it, at least to knock it down. Early threat for the Dodgers here. Cardinals. Looking for a double play up the middle. Jeff Kent still has a little pop in his back. And the first pitch of breaking ball misses. Kent has career numbers that have Hall of Fame written all over. Yeah, I said more home runs than any second baseman in the history of the game, approaching 1,500 RBIs. A lot of these guys, that's that's a good average for the Dodgers with runners in scoring positions. Many of them are struggling. Scary pitch here, two and zero. Oh the count now. Kent checks the sign. One thing about this power hitter Jeff Kent is he's not necessarily a well liked guy on his team. He's not a real chatty, friendly guy. But you know what? He loves to win. He's, a, he's not afraid to make an enemy to make his team better. This ball hit hard to left field, but right at Chris Duncan, who makes the play easily. I think he got away with one there. For the Dodgers, first baseman, number seven, James Lomi. Loesch will contend now with James Loney, the Dodger first baseman. Another one of those guys that Eastler believes will develop a power stroke, just five homers, but he does have 29 RBIs. Well, they have not, uh, they've only hit two home runs in their last uh, nine ball games, and Loney has both of them here at home. Last nine home games and they've only hit a total of 15 home runs at home for the year 
and 32 overall. Their leader has five. This game marks the first third of the season now being done. So you multiply five times three, and I'm pretty sure that's 15. You wonder whether this club will have a 20 home run hitter. Or not. Yeah, I think I think Kemp, or not Kemp, but uh, Kent was the leader last year with 20 home runs. This is a club with rich tradition, much like the St. Louis Cardinals. So we just love it when these two teams battle. and two. Be careful here. Cardinals have put a little distance between the all time series head to head. But I can remember probably close to when you were playing at, at times it was separated by one or two games. It was tough, Both to, beat. Ways. It was yeah. tough to beat the Dodgers. You look at their pitchers that they had. You're talking about of course Drysdale and Koufax in the 60s but even Valenzuela and Royce and Hershiser. In the 80s, uh, you know, Singer, Osteen. Right. I mean, you talk. You talk about incredible pitch. You could have, you know, Koufax, Drysdale, Osteen, Sutton, mm. and then you had, you know, and then you have guys like Bill Singer and people like that on top of it. You know, the pop. Change up on the outside corners, a strikeout. Recruit one, no score. Sunday marks the return of the groundbreaking Emmy Award winning show combining sports and science. This week on Sports Science, how does a screaming crowd affect a free throw shooter's heart rate? And can a single blade of grass ruin a golfer's swing? We study the external forces that can make an athlete spin out of control, like Al Roboski. Sports Science goes out of control on Sunday at 9 p.m. only on FSN Midwest. Here's a look at the Queen Mary, Al. Yeah, and that dome right behind it used to house uh, Howard Hughes' Spruce Goose. Remember that airplane? I do. Why, you wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you ju I'm just, just amazed at the wealth of knowledge you have. A total useful, useless <laughs> knowledge. Rick and Keel the hitter as we're on the second inning. And he misses high with a fastball. He's got the good fastball. And Keel, pretty good fastball hitter. Eight homers, 23 RBIs for Rick, and he's played an excellent center field. Breaking ball, you can see after 93, 94 mile an hour fastball. It's got such an easy slow motion and then the ball just kind of jumps out of his hand. Watch out. He tried to get that in and got away from him and hit Ankiel right in the middle of the back. It was ahead of him one and two had him set up for the fastball inside and just didn't hit his location. Yeah, yeah, just no way ready. to get out of the way of that one. Mm. Rather there than in the rib cage or midsection. But where he was hit didn't seem like there was a lot of padding there either, right on the hip. I tend to think the worst place to get hit is anywhere in the hand, finger, arms, because you've got a lot of vulnerable places. Elbow. Players use a lot of padding to protect that now. Troy Gloss hits. And there's a 95 mile an hour fastball, knee high. For strike one. Gloss has had success against Penny also. Penny's also the kind of guy that he can just shut you down too. And Keel doesn't run much. Gloss vulnerable to the double play. Has hit very well the last couple of weeks after a rough, rough start. Also a college student here in Southern California UCLA yes UCLA of course he went to Carlsbad ball hit hard to center field Kent back on the warning track and he makes the play as the ball just not carrying very well here on this cool night here in LA but that ball hit very well by Troy Gloss just didn't quite get enough of it well Ricky you'll know and, and you remember from playing here that at night the ball just does not travel Tomorrow, 
you know, that ball's well out of here. Absolutely. During the day, the ball will fly out of Dodger Stadium, but at night, the cool air and sometimes even a mist in the air that it just keeps the ball down, knocks it down. It has been crazy weather here in L.A. the last couple of days. The rain last night. I'm not sure I ever have seen anything like that. This ball tapped on the right side. Could be two. Loney makes the play at second. And on to Pence to complete the double play as Aaron Miles bounces out. No runs through an inning and a half. Coming to you on FSN here on beautiful high-definition TV from Dodger Stadium. In Los Angeles, California. Always a lot of sights to see here in L.A. A lot of pretty people here at the ballpark. Yeah? <laughs> you know, the old rookie prank where you talk about the movie stars and be pointing them out in the stands <laughs> or talking to them. And some rookie come flying up the steps to check it out. And you're trying to get their automatic. imaginary person. Maybe we can convince one of the Dodgers at or Cardinals that Brent Stover is a movie star as he's wandering through the stadium. He's not. You might think he is. Oh, sure. There's one of the best young hitters in the game. And Matt Kemp, 325 is his average. His potential is enormous. Yeah, he's very young and got a nice sized body where he can grow into it, but it's going to be a power guy at one time. He can run very well. Three forty two last season and on this homestand. He's been very hot betting nearly six hundred. One of those things you expect when a young player hits as well as he did in his first full year in the big leagues that maybe they'll figure something out about him and his next year won't be quite so good. But his number is still high. Knows how to hit good power especially in the gaps and he swings and misses at a good breaking ball from Kyle Osh. That's his third strikeout. We mentioned the beautiful sights here. Al, now I got some trivia for you. See that red light on the top of the Capitol Records building? I don't really see it now. Well, it, it, it's trust, there. I trust there. Well, it's it's in Morris Code, sending out the signal for Hollywood in Morris Code. You didn't know to, that. To to the aliens. To whoever to whoever's looking at it. It's also the home of the Beatles. They have all the rights to the Beatles records, music. I've heard of them. You know, it's, it's in Hollywood. We've heard of Blake DeWitt, too. Had a nice yeah. visit with him from Sykeston, Missouri. And he was nowhere to be seen on the death chart when spring training began. Well, they lose about three third basemen in a span of uh, 25 minutes. All of a sudden, he got pulled up and decided that he wanted to stick around. Get your chance, then you've got to do something with it. And he has done a nice job. He's leading all major league rookies with batting average. He's tied for second in RBIs, tied for third in home runs, third in runs, third in on base percentage and slugging percentage. This one popped out of play. Count goes full. Mike Eastler loves his swing. And he got worked over pretty good last night. And that will happen. We'll sure. have days like that, but certainly a lot of friends and family of Blake DeWitt watching our telecast tonight from Sykeston, Missouri. First round pick. This ball is going to be in the hole. Pass to diving Adam Kennedy, and DeWitt has the third Dodger hit of the evening. Three hits, three strikeouts for the Dodgers. You play with Mariano Duncan. Right? I sure did. He, he's a good guy. Oh, he's he? a great guy. Mariano was a pretty good hitter. And I know he loves to talk hitting with his players as we look at DeWitt's base hit. And came up as a shortstop, and he came up from the shortstop factory, San Pedro de Macaís. And I remember him trying to learn how to switch hit. Tommy was sort of throwing him batting practice every day to try to get him to hit left handed and right handed. And Never did quite work. He couldn't hit left handed to save his life. And the reason you would do that is because of his running speed. Right. Trying to find a way to play him more. 
He had a couple of pretty nice seasons with the Dodgers. Chin Lung Hu takes a slider for a strike. He's getting all the playing time because of Fukal, who's out with that back injury. They thought he would be activated last night, but woke up with back problems. They really liked Hu. He's struggled offensively, but the last three games he's come a lot. Ball hit on the ground. Could be two. Miles takes it himself and on to first close play, but it's the game's second double play. And we're through two innings at Dodger Stadium. No score. On to the third inning from Dodger Stadium as we see the very famous Hollywood sign here in Los Angeles. Beautiful Los Angeles County. They're a buzz here with the Lakers and how well they're doing. But they also like their Dodger ball game. Well, you got a lot of people to draw from here. And it seems like the Dodger faithful has been a little bit harsh on this team in the early going, especially in situational hitting. Cardinals have had issues with hitting with runners in scoring position, which may not be much different, but the Cardinals. At 29 and 21, eight games over 500, I think, are making most fans happy yeah, with I, their start. And, you know, one of the Cardinal players put it best. I think it might have been Schumacher. He said, yes, you can you can dwell on that, but at least we're getting people on base. The real problem is when you don't get people on base. And he has such a live arm. One and one to count to Yadier Molina. Molina, 295. You mentioned the five errors, including one last night. Has not thrown out base runners at the same level that he's done the last couple of years as well, but his bat really has improved. But you know, as far as the base runners and that his percentage has gotten better, it's over 30 percent now. The early going, he, he had very few opportunities to throw people out because pitchers were just relying on his reputation and not holding runners close, and there were half the times successful steals he. Could he didn't even have a chance to throw. Nice smooth delivery you mentioned from Penny as a curveball in the dirt two and two. I think of the Cardinals missing a Chris Carpenter in that regard. Nobody quicker to home than Chris Carpenter. So when he's out there, I, that's going to help any catcher's percent. Sure. And you know if you can deliver the ball very quickly, and then with the quick release of Molina, you know a base dealer doesn't have a shot. So, you know, statistically or time wise. Bounce down the ground to who? Across the diamond. And that's out number one here in the third inning is underway. And you might want to check out the Hyatt Regency Riverfront, perfectly well, located across really from the arch and steps oh. from Bush Stadium. Ask about the Cardinals' bat package, which includes tickets to the game and a personalized Rawlings engraved bat. The Hyatt Touch is back. And you know what the Hyatt Riverfront is? Which hotel it is? I do. It used to be the Adams Mart. I do. That was part of their grand opening ceremonies and everything. Great staff there. They do a great job and they're ready to accommodate everyone. And as we say, great location too. Great location. Still trying to get those horses out of the lobby. They offered, them, they offered them to me. Was big. You were a big horse owner, weren't you? At one time. They eat a lot of oats, Al. Uh, yeah, I lost a lot of my, I mean, you know. <laughs> 2 and 0 the count on Kyle Loesch. Hitting just 111 on the year. You might think he might be overmatched, but the Cardinal pitchers have done a nice job of helping themselves out. Think of Braden Looper and the job he's done with the bat. Adam Wainwright, you'd expect that, but. Cardinal staff has done a nice job. Ball bounced up the middle. And Penny falls down trying to make the play, but all kinds of time for who, and it's out number two. If you want to win a ticket to the ball game, go to StubHub.com. It's fast and easy. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the St. Louis Cardinals. It's one of those ground outs you don't really want to brag about too much. Yeah, <laughs> no. didn't hit that ball very hard. 
knocked Penny right off his feet. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So he had a change up. That one may have caught Jerry Lane as he's jumping about behind home plate. I think it hit off a home plate, bounced up, and might have caught him in the right hand. Yeah, I was saying the hand. He's going to ask Brad Penny to take a minute or two as this ball is in the dirt. It does hit just off the corner of the plate and bounces off maybe his right forearm or forearm, elbow area. Well, he had it fully exposed the whole the whole time. The ball took a funny hop off of home plate as the catcher Russell Martin not able to block that ball. The gold glover. The gold glover. I wasn't trying to insinuate anything. I don't think he's going to get Jerry Lane's vote this year for gold glove. No. But you mentioned it is a lot about offense, Al. Yeah, I, I mean, all those positions. Always has been, really. Kenny Reach used to say, you go up to Mike Schmidt and say, how are my gold gloves <laughs> on your mantle? <laughs> well, Reach, he's one of the best fielding third basemen, if not the best of all time in terms of fielding percentage. Percentage. Right. Yeah, he'd win the percentage battle, and and Schmidt would take the gold glove home. Those 500-plus home runs, I guess. He, it has something to do with it. You know, we need to get a hit for Ken. He's hit the ball much harder than his 0 for 17. Really has had a streaky season. Had a great spring training. Started out hot, then went cold, then got hot, then went cold again. Average has been like the stock market. And no rhyme or reason for that. And when you're not hitting well, usually the count's 0 and 2 all the time, but now 3 and 0. On Kennedy hitting in the ninth spot. Cardinals still looking for their first hit of the evening against Brad Penny and not a hit, but it is a base runner with two outs. A two out walk to Kennedy and it would be the top of the order and skip Schumacher. Schumacher bounced out to short to start this game off. The Californian, he would he had a nice, nice series, didn't he, in San Diego? Oh, absolutely. And got a base hit last night when he came in late for defense, but Remember when he was 0 for 16? You know, it was that same situation. That's right. Like every time you, you feel like you're batting 0 for 2. Like you got two strikes on you before you even step in the batter's box when you're struggling. And the pitcher that's struggling against your teammates, hanging sliders, never seems to hang it to you. <laughs> Starts you off with that nasty one right <laughs> on the corner. You come back to the dugout and say, how are you guys hitting this guy? And there goes the runner, and he got a nice jump, and he's going to be safe. Well, if you watch, he almost left way too soon, but Penny paid no attention to him at all. Watch him, watch him take off, and then he has to stop, and Penny never looked him back or stepped off. And that's an example of what I was talking about exactly. with, with uh, Molina. There was many times a pitcher just let a guy get a running lead and take off, and Catcher has no shot. And now 3 0 on Schumacher, and Penny in danger of walking back to back. Cardinals on four pitches. And as you say, that's going to go down as a stolen base against Russell Martin, and there's nothing yeah. he could do about it. Swing here? No. <laughs> You're supposed to tell me before the pitch. Well, I was going to, but. And Honeycutt's coming out to talk to him right now. And, and talking with Rick before the game, he said that one of Penny's problems is that all of a sudden, you know, in, in a, a year ago, you know, maybe he'd give up one run. But now he's not minimizing the damage, and all of a sudden it turns into three or four runs. Honeycutt was an excellent pitcher himself and totally unlike the way Brad Penny throws. Honeycutt had the little sinker and a little slider. And was a reliever, was a starter early in his career. But it's interesting to have a pitching coach that really has to learn how well, other people can be successful. I know you will appreciate this, but when I first got into baseball, there was no such thing as having a left-hander be a pitching coach. Is that right? Oh, no. I mean. They wouldn't think they could work with a guy. No. They were so backwards and, you know, left-handed thinking. Late arriving crowd here. Something new. <laughs> Arrive late, leave early in some cases. And and didn't go. 
people might be surprised too that the majority of I, I would say it probably was the majority of pitching coaches back in the 50s and 60s and 70s were catchers like Dave Duncan. Chris Duncan the hitter chance to put the Cardinals on the board top of the third inning and he takes the ball in the dirt and Penny is really having a hard time finding the strike zone here. That's his changeup. He used his changeup about twice as much last year than he did the year before and really started to get the feel for how that works among his other pitches and just searching for something right now that he can have command of. You can relate to that. Sometimes you have so many pitches you you can't figure out what to do. The 2 0 pitch to Duncan. Good pitch to hit and he takes it to left field. That's going to be a base hit. And the Cardinals will be on the scoreboard as Adam Kennedy crosses home plate. Chris Duncan picks up RBI number 14, and the Cardinals take a one to nothing lead here in LA. And the boos rain down on Brad Penny. All getting up a little bit, and Chris going the opposite way. And coming off his bat, it's going to slice away into foul territory. Would want to make the first or third out at third base, but you know you can. Most of the time, clubs will challenge Pierre's throwing arm. But with Albert up, you don't want to have, run any risk. You want him with men on. Absolutely, and this ball in the dirt. Penny's going to be careful with pool holes. It's one thing to be struggling with your control, and it's quite another thing to be struggling with your control and having to get Albert pool holes out. Because now you're in danger of hanging something. And Pujols knows what to do with that. He has 31 RBIs, 345 batting average, fifth in the National League with that 347 mark. The 1 0 pitch to Albert. Swung on and hit hard to center field, and it's going to be down for a hit for Albert. Another run will score as Schumacher scores the second run. Albert. But how about Albert Pujols recognizing no one is at second base? He took the big turn going around first, surveyed the situation, and saw that he could come in. Now, coming off of Albert, is going to slice away from the center fielder, and he tries to make the dive. He does keep it in front of him. And once he locates it, he fires it back in, but nobody's at second base. And Albert recognized that and just kept on going and snuck in there with the double. Really begs the question, who's on first? Or who's on well, second? Who's, who's the shortstop? <laughs> well, no one was on second. This ball sliced to left field, and that's down, and that's a fair ball. Rick Ann Keel with another run scoring hit, and he is safe at second with a double. Two more Cardinal runs, and they lead four to nothing here in Los Angeles. All with two outs, and two quick ground outs, Al, and then Brad Penny couldn't throw a strike. That's right, and this is really not a. A real uh, swing that Rick is going to really say, okay, I really nailed that one. He almost stopped running, thinking it was probably going to be caught a little flare by the third baseman, but it got over the infield and he very effectively plates two. Troy Gloss will now try to add to the Cardinal lead. He takes strike one. But isn't this what they said? That Penny were maybe a year ago, it'd be one run. And it shouldn't have been that after. Nobody out or two outs and nobody on base, and he turns that possible one run into four. And he's not done and yet. He's, as he's done. just all over the place right now with his off speed pitches. Can't find the right release point. And after two quick outs here in the third inning, he actually had gone two and two third innings, and all he'd done is hit Rick Ankeel, and then a walk to Kennedy, a walk to Schumacher. And three straight hits as this ball deep in the hole. It's going to be a long throw, but in time to get Troy Gloss. The Cardinals do pick up four runs on three hits, and they lead the Dodgers here in LA four to nothing. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by your St. Louis area Kia retailers. Kia, the power to surprise. By Aflac. Aflac, ask about it at work. And by Bank of America, the official bank of the St. Louis Cardinals. Downtown Los Angeles, California. And baseball action comes from Chavez Ravine. 
And Brad Penny, who had a rough top of the third inning, leads off for the Dodgers. It'll be Penny, Pierre, and Ethier. And see what Kyle Loesch can do with a four to nothing lead. All right, fell behind the count 2 0, and now he comes back to hit a strike, but he's got that lead. You've got to bury him, especially when you got the pitcher. Pretty good swing there. Popped it up on the right side. Molina gives some chase and finds the stands. Well, Penny, you know, is hitting over 200, and he can handle the stick a little bit. But boy, he's got to be kicking himself there in the fourth or third inning, the four-run inning where he had two outs, nobody on base. He walks two and then gives up three consecutive base hits, three consecutive RBI hits. 2 2 pitch to Penny is laced foul. You wonder when a pitcher has an inning like that and then has to come up and hit whether or not that might add to the frustration because it can be a frustrating experience to be a pitcher and have to hit. I mean, I'm just telling you, it's frustrating. And if he doesn't have a good at bat here, it's just going to feel like it's raining on him. 2 2 pitch is bounce foul. What kind of hitter were you? Terrible. 110. But I did get a hit off of Nolan Ryan. How many, people, how many people can say that? Do, were your eyes open? No. The best part of it is the next three guys struck out. <laughs> let off the first base. 2-2 two -two pitch to Penny is bounced over the head of Loesch. And it's going to be a tough play. Kennedy tries to make it and does as Aaron Miles gives way to Kennedy. And it's out number one here in the third inning. Well, that was... Very well placed and a very nice play by Kennedy. He must have said something right there. Both middle infielders converging for it. He, see, he said something. He said, I'll get it. And an awkward throw for him, but you normally equal think that's to the, the bat. Shortstop. Yeah, it's, it looked like it'd be a much easier play for the shortstop. But Kennedy having to throw across his body off balance makes the play. Kennedy's defense certainly has improved over last season. Well, I, I, it just goes to show you how bad that knee was, both offensively and defensively. Speaking of bad knees, Andrew Jones, the Dodgers announced today, is going to have knee surgery on Tuesday, and he'll be out four to six weeks. And think about that ball that dropped in center field in front of Matt Kemp that Albert hit. Andrew Jones probably makes that play. Yeah, one of the best ever to play center field. And, you know, that was right before the game, and he took he was out taking bang practice today, so I don't know if he injured something or he thought about that strikeout last night to end the game. Well, he's certainly got some very powerful offensive numbers to go along with his great defensive play. This ball hit hard to right field, coming on and not able to make the play as Schumacher he does knock the ball down to keep Ron Pierre at first base. And the Dodgers now have four hits. And their speeds to reward. Nice attempt by Schumacher. Yeah, I thought he got a very good jump on the ball. He just he was sinking so quickly. And he gets there, decides to dive, and just with a, a loose, pliable webbing, just couldn't hold on to it. How about that play he made in center field? That was outstanding in San Diego, diving on the warning track and hauling in a line drive. He could be hot as a fielder, too, not just as a pitcher and a hitter. Pretty nice play. Pujols holding Pierre at first, and Andre Ethier hits with one out here in the Dodger third inning, and Loesch gets the signal to hold the ball and step off, and here's the pitch speed from Mazda, 92 to high, 73 to low. Nice variance. This is going to be the game right here. Juan Pierre has 18 steals. 21 attempts. Also got a left-handed hitter, so Albert holding on, a big hole on the right side. See if Ethier tries to hit that hole on the right side as he pops up the first pitch. And Keelan Schumacher, Schumacher calls him off to make the play, and so much for that advantage. With Pierre aboard at first base, you wonder how aggressive Joe Torre is going to be with Pierre with his club down four to nothing. I don't think you can stop running, do you? No. If You're that's, good at if it. that's part of your game, and that is Pierre's game. You know, you've got
got to trust if he can get the jump that he feels comfortable with, you just you go ahead and take it. As a team that doesn't have any power, that's one way to get back into a game. If you wait for the power, it's never going to happen. Yeah, because they don't have any. Two outs for the Dodgers here in the third, and Russell Martin takes strike one. Joe Torre having to learn his club. How do they react in situations like this? I'm sure, he was pretty comfortable there in New York, knowing his personnel. But it's really a really a chore to go f to another club as a as a manager. Well, he spent half his time in in the Orient in spring training. So he didn't see it. You know, they were still playing games in, in the States. Great fruit league. But Joe also at a disadvantage having to learn the National League. Been gone for 12 years from the National League. You know, he doesn't know much about the opposition either. That's where you really rely on your scouts and your coaches. 0 2 the count on Martin. Let's see if Loesch can put him away. And that's a curveball in the dirt. Well, Blocked by Yadier Molina. Pierre the runner at first. Cardinals have drawn first blood here. Four runs in the top of the third inning on three hits, all with two outs after two walks. A run scoring base hit by Duncan, then Albert Pujols drove in the second run, and then Ricky Ankiel blooped the ball to left field. It was a double for him and two RBIs. 2-2 two, two the count. Got a good one going in Pittsburgh as the Cubs and Pirates are tied in the top of the 13th, 4-4. Four, four. Houston has already won. Milwaukee has already won. Since that was Marquis and Dumatre, the starters in that game. I don't think they're around. And there goes Pierre. I wouldn't think so. But you know, we saw Claude Osteen here tonight. Claude was a great pitcher here, but in that memorable 25 inning the game that we had in uh, against the Mets late that one season, and Claude came to the team. He pitched nine and a third shutout innings in that game and got a no decision. That's a rough night. Well, it was a good one, but nothing to show for it. And there goes the runner again, and there's the throw right on the bag, and he got him. Strong throw for Yadier Molina, and he gets the speedy Juan Pierre to end the third inning. How about that? Yadier Molina with a cannon. Cardinals lead four to nothing. Cardinals baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Cardinals hitting the top of the fourth inning, and it'll be Aaron Miles, Yadier Molina, and the pitcher Kyle Loesch, who's been, I guess I'd say, pretty good so far out. Three innings, a bunch of zeros. Yes. Get up some hits, but you got to uh, also have to say that he was part of that throw that got uh, Juan Pierre, even though the replay may have shown they looked safe. Pretty close, wasn't it? Penny trying to regain his form as Molina slaps it off the facing of the Dodger dugout. I'm going I'm to ask you something here because uh, I had somebody tell me about Penny was asking about him. And I said, well, you know, he looks like he's disinterested. And, you know, watch him kind of something like sometimes you act a little too cool, can't you? You certainly can. This ball bounced to short. Who takes care of? Aaron Miles one out here in the fourth inning. Yeah, there's a fine line between being relaxed and composed, Al, and maybe being a little bit too complacent. Yeah, and, and you know he cares, and oh, you know he wants to do well, and but you know sometimes that presented an image to whether it's a hitter or to a fan, and people are going to make their own determination. And the hitter is the one that you really worry about. If you're That's giving right. them a the wrong impression and mound presence is what we're talking about and Cardinals have had some pitchers you think about Jeff Weaver Jason Marquis as guys were really questioned about their mound presence by Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa and others yeah it's not that you have to be demonstrative or you know you just go out there but 
can't look defeated or you can't be frustrated by things that are beyond your control. That's probably the biggest thing is, is you know, as a pitcher, you can only control certain things. If a fielder makes an error behind you, you cannot show that you're upset by it or that, you know, why did he do that? Why me? The why me syndrome. So has he forgotten about the last inning? You tell me. I had a short memory. <laughs> you almost have to have that. Absolutely. I Not mean, just from day to day, but really literally inning to inning. Inning to inning. Sometimes, you know, so you give up a home run, you got to forget it. Because if you're still thinking about it, you're going to give up a home run to the next guy. And again, you're not talking about having a mound presence where you're screaming and yelling on the no. mound and being like Pasquale Perez would be the classic example to me of somebody who just was wired or Rob Dibble, maybe. And well, dip, be careful with Dibble. He's half Hungarian. Oh, that explains it. It does. His mother. But who would you think of in terms of good mound presence? One, two pitch to Molina just misses. Well, Adam Wainwright, uh, you know, Chris Carpenter. Guys that you know that you know they get the ball and they look like they're you know they're they have a and a strikeout on a fastball up and in and you don't see Yadier Molina strike out very often. Uh, Yadi, the toughest to strike out in the National League, and he gets himself out going after a pitcher's pitch. That pitch up there is only going to produce a swing and miss and at best a pop up. When, when hitters talk about a pitch being up in the strike zone that they can handle not that far. No they're, they're talking about something up. They're talking about a little bit above the belt the number maybe. right right you know you know something there up in the strike zone that is their pitch up above the strike zone is the pitcher's pitch. So that pitch right there is very the only guy right now that I see consistently handles that is Albert Pujols. Right. Has the ability to hit a high pitch and stay on top of it and hit it for a line drive. Everybody else is going to is going to either get the swing and miss or the pop up. O2 to count on Loesch and that'll take care of the Cardinals here in the fourth as Penny settles down three up three down Cardinals lead four to nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning, time for our athletic trivia question. Today's question, who had the Cardinals' longest hitting streak during the 90s? Now, <laughs> good question. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to guess uh, Ray Langford. I'm going to guess uh, Joe McEwing. Good guess. I remember it now. Super Joe. Yeah, he was fun, wasn't he? Oh, he's great to have around. Tony La Russa used to say if you put somebody with a little bit more ability into that body oh, and yeah. that brain and that heart, and we've got a great major league player. Oh, and how true was that? He got the most out of his ability. Russell Martin. Base hit in the first inning. Leads off for the Dodgers. It'll be Martin, Kent, and Loney trying to get the Dodgers back in this game. Cardinals have had an awful lot of exciting games in 2008. One thing you can say about this club. They've got great balance. Starting pitching to their relievers. Their defense has been good. Their hitting's been good. Nothing great in any of those categories, but they've been close in so many ball games. Very few blowouts. Martin fouls this one back. Martin born in Canada. You think about the Dodgers, one of the things you think about is how good a job they've done attracting players from all around the world. Oh, they, you know. It's going to hit the right field. It's going to be right down the line. Is it going to get in the stands? Is Schumacher going to have a play? He does not. Looked like he was unsure of himself in that right field corner. Yeah, very tentative and tippy-toeing there, and he had a little more room. You know, it's a new configuration for a guy like Skip Schumacher with the, the new stands down here, but you watch him kind of feels the change as he went from the grass to the to the warning track. And he knows he doesn't have a lot of room, but he it landed, I would say, probably about in the middle of there. You think those guys would have helped him, Al? 
Um, you got room. Isn't that their job? Yes. Two two pitch bounced to Gloss, backhands it, and throws out Martin on a close play. Watch out. Schnooks, this date in history. May 24th, 1975, Al Roboski. That wasn't my face then. That's it, yeah. Records his 20th career save by getting out Manny Moda. Now, does Manny Moda know that? You guys were chatting before the game. Oh, uh, Manny Moda and I talk about an event. Did you celebrate that particular? No, not that one. Which at bat are you talking about? It was in St. Louis, and I believe it was in 75 also. But uh, I threw him 13 3 2 pitches that he oh. fouled off. He's a great pinch hitter, of course, Moda. And, and he said that he said there was nothing he was taking. If ball over his head, this and that. So that's how I threw that many strikes. But there was, you know, two outs in the top of the ninth inning, one run. Jeff Kent pops this one in the right field, and Schumacher's been very busy today defensively. Puts away Kent. I eventually walked him, but I won because I got the next guy out. You know, Probably not the, as good. The, as good the tie run was on second base. <laughs> and, and you're right. I mean, Manny, you know, Lenny Harris, and, and now uh, Sweeney passed Sweeney. him up, but, you know, he, he for a long time, he held the pinch hit record. Dave Hansen was a good pitcher, yeah. pinch hitter here, and good fastball. Remember some of the battles right. between he and Lee Smith. Oh boy, it's an art. Pinch hitting is an art. Brian Barton's been the best in terms of average for the Cardinals this year, but it's in some ways a lost art as Loach pumps in a fastball at the letters for strike one. Loney was called out on strikes to end the first inning. Nice to see him hitting with nobody aboard. First rounder that made it to the big leagues. The Dodgers had some terrible luck. As good as their farm system was, they had a stretch where they seemed like none of their first rounders made it. Unusual to think about it because you think about the rookie of the year successions that they had. What that was four or five in a row. And they did it two different times. They did it in the 90s and they also did it, I believe it was in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, late 60s. Early 70s, Sizemore was one of those. But, you know, in the 90s, it was the Piazza, the Valenzuela was in the 80s, but uh, Carroll's Piazza. Todd Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth. Ball bounced out to second base is Loney and a nice quick inning for Kyle Loesch. Four hits, no runs for Loesch. He leads the Dodgers four to nothing. What's on tap for the St. Louis Cardinals? Bud Light keeps it coming. And what's coming next is the final game of this series on News Channel 5. Tomorrow, 2.30 is when the pregame show begins. Jay Randolph and yours truly will be bringing the action. And the Cardinals hoping to be looking at a sweep tomorrow. Purchase a broom for you. You can bring it to the ballpark. First things first. Got to take care oh, of this. That's right. Brad Penny settled down last inning. Retired four straight after a very rough third inning. Well, you know, and this has been his pattern. You know, Honeycutt said usually in the first few innings he will uh, have one bad inning. And Kyle Loesch has experienced that this year also. So he's going to have to guard against it when he pitches in the bottom of this inning. It's been the fifth inning for him a couple times. Not that easy, is it? These guys make it look easy sometimes, but it is not. Kennedy walked and scored, and he gets a base hit in between first and second to lead off the fifth inning. You can visit the official online shop of the Cardinals at stlcardinals.com. Browse the largest selection of authentic team gear, including clubhouse caps, T-shirts, jerseys, and more. Get your cards gear straight from the source. Shop the STLCardinals.com shop today. Now let's see how he handles base runners here in the fifth inning. Once the Cardinals got something going in the third inning, 
They kept the line moving. Kennedy the runner at first. Three for four in stolen bases as Penny steps off. Yeah, Kennedy stole the, his fourth base of the year in that eventful third inning. Penny's going to pay more attention to him now. Leaning. Remember, he had such a big lead that he took off, but Penny still had the ball. Standing on the mound, he stopped. Penny never threw over. It and probably won't work. And again. restarted. He <laughs> can't try something different this time. Cardinals don't run a lot. Well, with the steal tonight, they're, they have 19 st uh, successful steals, 12 caught steals. Terrible with late the ratio. Dodgers with 47 stolen bases. Does not go, and there's a strike. Belled high to Schumacher. Schumacher knows that there's an option of stealing here with the Cardinals up four to nothing. And he's thinking, be patient, but he's also trying to find a hole here. Get that runner first to third. Run and hit. A lot of managers tend to be more aggressive once they get that lead. They know they can kind of continue to apply the pressure on a guy like Brad Penny who's struggling. And pile on a little bit. And Try and make sure you get at least a five run lead so a grand slam doesn't tie you. And there goes Kennedy. This ball hit on the ground off the leg of Schumacher. Ends up in fair territory, but once it hits him in foul, it is a foul ball. Kennedy was moving. And you think about the Cardinal teams of the past and even some Dodger teams with Maury Wills, who's at the ballpark today, and the, the kind of stress that that can put on a pitcher when. Guys on the bases are taken off and there are hit and runs. It just it just makes the job more difficult because now your attention is split. Yeah, and a lot of managers today try to control the running game by a different variety of moves to first. You know, just you know, Tony has that a pitcher just hold the ball to take the spring and life out of the legs of a base stealer. Usually a hitter will call timeout. Schumacher now down one and two. That ball in the dirt blocked by Martin. Two two the count to Schumacher. Walked and scored in the third. And, and Ricky, you know, as a pitcher, you, and we've seen a lot of guys that once they get guys on base, they split their concentration so much to where it's to the detriment of throwing their stuff going to the plate. Worst thing you can do is be thinking about first and throwing home. That's usually a belt high fastball. Or a hanging slider. 2 2 the count. Schumacher the hitter. Kennedy the runner at first. He doesn't go. This ball hit on the ground to short. And this should be a double play. 6 4 3. And Kennedy not running. Produces a double play for the Redbirds here in the top of the fifth inning. That was turned very quickly. A little shovel pass. It's high to Kent, but he makes the return throw. Should have been going. Easy to say that now, isn't it? And you know, and Penny does get a lot of ground balls. He, he rarely gives up home runs. Chris Duncan has four of those home runs on the season. He hits with two outs and nobody aboard. Yeah. Single in a run in the third. Matter of fact, it wasn't until June, early June of last season, when Penny gave up his first home run. That's incredible for a guy who's a starting pitcher. Throws as hard as he does. And will pitch up on his own. Yeah, and then, and, you know, just sometimes you just, uh, guy walks into it. A lot of defensive swings against Brad Penny when he's going well. There's that curveball. Almost seems as if his curveball is erratic here tonight. And he has allowed four home runs this year, but struck out three. He's Walk to and hit a batter. Get on the ground at first base. That'll take care of Chris Duncan. And Cardinals are retired here in the fifth inning. Go to the bottom of the fifth. Matt Kemp, DeWitt, and Hoot. Four nothing St. Louis as they have an equal number of hits as the Dodgers. Four apiece, but they strung theirs together in the third inning out and took the lead against. Brad Penny, Penny, and now Kyle Loesch 
has the job of keeping that lead and holding off till the bullpen arrives. And if you think about it, the Dodgers had their best opportunity with one out. They had two hits in the first inning. The only inning they've had more than one base runner. Second inning gave up a base hit, but he was racing a double play. Third inning base hit, he was caught stealing. So Loesch has done a good job relying on his defense and helping his own cause. That's pitching. Center fielder Matt Kemp waves at a breaking ball, and that is strikeout number four for Loesch. Our Chili's Pitch count for Kyle Lowe's just 69 pitches here as he works in the fifth inning. Take that and hopefully he can get out of here. Blake Half a dozen more pitches get the final two outs. If you're 13 or 14 an inning is pretty good. Is that a number you go by? I kind of I've always you thought like it was like 12. Strikeout pitchers have to throw more. Yes. Strikeout pitcher, pitchers. But I mean, a strikeout pitcher, it's not fair to have kind of that 100 plateau right. either. Pride of Sykeston, Missouri, bounces this ball on the right side. Diving play by Albert, spins around and makes the play at first. Talk about making your defense a helper. That's exactly what Albert Pujols does for Kyle Loesch as he just lays out and makes the backhanded stab. I remember the first time he got a base hit, hit him to the right side. This time Albert shows a great range and Loesch, give him a lot of credit. He just gave Albert some, some credit, but he was right there to be in position for Albert's great play and how quickly he got the ball to his pitcher covering the back. It's one of those things about the game of baseball It's just looks so easy when a pitcher runs over there but you're running at full speed you know you have to catch the base with your foot and you got the runner bearing down on you and you're catching the ball as you move it's not that easy and you've got to run on your toes so you if you run on your heels your eyes go up and down and you most of the time that's what you see when the guy a pitcher can't connect the, with the ball so makes me think of Dave LaPointe dropping the ball during the 82 World Series cost him a victory yeah. in that 82 series of course he pitched well Cardinals end up winning the series in 82. The Dodgers haven't won a World Series since 1988. They won a playoff game since then? I don't if believe they have, so. they've only won one, but it, it may have, yeah. Maybe just one playoff game since, since 88. 88. Another aspect to that play, the pitcher kind of has to gauge in his own mind the running speed of the hitter. And determine whether you can come down the line and have a target, or do you have to race right to the bag to beat the speedy runner? Pitch up in the zone, Loesch trying to finish off who? Cardinals have a chance to go into a virtual tie with, with the, the Cubbies for first place. The Cubs lose an extra innings to the Pirates, 5-4. Tough hop is handled by Adam Kennedy, and he throws out who? Good defense behind Kyle Loesch. Three up, three down, the backhand stab. We go to the sixth. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Rico. Move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. By your local St. Louis Chrysler dealers. And by Jack in the Box. We don't make it until you order it. 50 year anniversary of the Dodgers being here in Los Angeles. After years of tradition in Brooklyn, New York, they built tradition here in Los Angeles. Many of those players here at the ballpark tonight from the 60s, part of that celebration. And Albert Pujols leads off for the Redbirds here in the sixth. Swings at the first pitch, strike one. Here's our Firestone leaderboard. Albert leading in so many categories. Second in on base percentage, I believe. Jammed on that pitch, and it's going to be trouble. And who's back? And the left fielder 
Pierre makes a diving play as looked like that was ticketed for a base hit. Pierre he tracks it down with his speed. Oh, that phenomenal speed, but if you just wonder why did it take such an athletic play to catch that little pop up? Must have been playing in the one. Well, playing awfully deep, respecting Albert's speed, but Pierre is the only one that got there. The shortstop going back, the center fielder coming in, and only Pierre and his speed can catch up with it. Rick Ankeel hits with one out. We talked about that leaderboard. Albert is fifth in the National League in hitting coming into this game at 347. Number four out, Ryan Ludwig finally qualified. Oh, yeah. At 348, but now he will back be back to being unqualified. 3.1 <laughs> plate appearances per game to qualify among the National League leaders. Right. Ankeel getting the start tonight in center. Duncan in he, left. Schumacher in right. He might have the margin of of one missing one game. He, d he doesn't. I figured it out. Oh, you already figured it 3. out. 3.1 times where we're at isn't enough. <laughs> it's, but you know what? He's going to get his chances. Get his chances, but wouldn't that be a shame that you know I, I told him, hey, do something special for him. He goes, well, I'm not in the lineup. I go, well, who's to say you're not going to pinch hit and do something special? And that 3.1 is plate appearances, so yes. that includes walks and getting hit by a pitch. And Ludwig's power has been exceptional the last couple of weeks. He's one away from his career high set last year, 14. A lot of people like to see him play every day. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I hear that a lot as that strike three on Ankiel. I think that day may can be I, can approaching. I, can I line up? <laughs> yeah. Right. Here's a pitch by pitch with Rick Ankiel. Right. Like fastball. He just throws by him up there, upstairs. Then he gets the Uncle Charlie. Another one. Waits on that one. Might have been the splitter. And it looks like a fastball. Late call from Jerry Lane, right? Late call. That's our Chevy pitch by pitch sequence to Rick Ankiel. Didn't argue, just took the turn, went back to the Cardinal dugout. Can't win. No, you cannot. Two outs in the Cardinal sixth. Troy Gloss, 0 for 2. Flew out the center field his first trip hit that ball very well and then bounced out the third. Cardinals all their damage out you mentioned it in the third inning. Walk to Kennedy walk to Schumacher base hit by Duncan Pujols double for Rick Ankiel. And there you have the four to nothing lead the Cardinals are enjoying here as they hit in the sixth inning. Very good pitching in this series. Hit on the ground to short. Three hopper to who? He's been busy tonight as well as Gloss bounces out. He's 0 for 3. The Dodgers will hit. Will Brad Penny take his turn or not? 4 to nothing, St. Louis. Our guy code quote is from Joe Torrey, Dodgers manager. I don't know whether I'd rather be managing or testing bulletproof vests, and this ball is crushed. Foul. Well, Brad, Brad, Brad Penny, and he does hit here. To lead off the bottom of the six. I think at times when he was managed in New York, he thought he was, <laughs> you know, but he was he was on the firing range without the vest. At some point when you're managing the Yankees and you deal with all the things you deal with with the New York fans and the high expectations and Mr. Steinbrenner, at some point do you just not care and just say, well, you know what, I'm going to just do my job the best way I can. Joe well, Torre impresses me as that kind of guy. Well, I I think that uh, Joe had. And the Yankees had a lot of that success because he was so well liked by the New York media yeah. and respected. And he's a player's manager that, you know, he was a great buffer zone for George Steinbrenner and the press for his players. Strikeout number five for Kyle Loesch, who is putting together a little string here. That's eight straight hitters he's retired after. The Pierre base hit with one out in the third inning. He hits here again with one out in the sixth inning. Singled, was caught stealing by Yadier Molina. 
And here's a bunt at third, and it actually reaches the shortstop Miles. He comes up, no chance. Interesting swinging bunt, not to be fielded by the third baseman, but he's trying to get that in the hole and make the shortstop feel it. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, because and that's something you work on. The third baseman is playing in. And so you bunt it hard enough to get it by the pitcher and the third baseman and make the shortstop feel it. With his great speed, he hits down on any ball. He has the potential to beat it out. Pretty good bat control right there, too, to get that ball away from the third baseman. We've seen a lot of times, you know, when you have a, a man on second base in a bunt situation, the shortstop will come over and cover third base, trying to get the lead runner. I used to watch Matty Alou practice just punching the ball over the infield right where the shortstop was and you know, the little tricks of trades that guys develop that kind of accentuate what their strengths are. This kid has a lot of strengths Andre Ethier one for two good young hitter hits the ball in the hole and Miles can't come up with the backhand as again that ball seemed like it was squirting away from Miles and he didn't really get a good read on it off the bat. That's probably going to be another base hit for the Dodgers here. Back to back hits here in the sixth inning. Well, I'm sure it is, but there's another play, like you said, a more accomplished shortstop, I think, makes those plays. Almost looks like that had, one. Almost looks like he's having trouble with his footwork, not getting all the way to the ball. Yeah. Miles normally a second baseman. You know, he, you know, Aaron can play shortstop on a limited basis and do a very good job but you, as you said aren't adept and you never have any problems with his defense at second base he's in the lineup for his bat tonight but they found him ball always finds you Russell Martin hits dangerous situation here for Kyle Loesch you've just had a little bunt base hit Right in front of your shortstop, then a backhand play that he can't come up with. Another infield hit. The frustration level is high for Kyle Loesch, but you're facing the middle of the Dodgers' border. And Russell Martin, Jeff Kent to follow. You bring up a very good point, and that's what we were talking about earlier about only worry about the things you can control. You know, sometimes, and Kyle has been guilty of it in the past, and he's aware of it and has worked hard to a, a, avoid it. But when plays are not made behind you, that's when you really got to tell your your teammates that, hey, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to, you know, we talk about a hitter picking up a guy who has a bat at bat in front of you. Well, pitchers can do that too when an error is made behind you. You can tell that guy, I said, hey, look, it, I know you're trying. Exactly. Trying to do your best. I'm going to show you how good I am to make sure it doesn't hurt us. Self defeating if you have a different attitude. Sure. It's ahead of Martin 0 2, and ball in the dirt. Molina setting up off the plate. I've seen guys that you know go out there and like, okay, I'd be out of the inning. It doesn't hurt. It can't hurt my ERA, and they don't worry about getting a W or an L. I mean, it's like, wait a minute. That's not. The bottom line is, do you win? Exactly. Nobody cares about how high your ERA is or how low it is. Do you win? Loesch has a chance to pick up his fourth victory of the season if he can continue at this pace. A little trouble here, though, in the. Dodger sixth and he hasn't won a game since Houston at home on April 27th. You think he'd be a little hungry too. He doesn't want to go three and two. The runners will be moving then perhaps. Two two the count. To the Dodger catcher Russell Martin. Martin has a little pop three homers 18 RBIs. Bit of a hanger there. Didn't really have sharp break to it. Fouls it straight back. Awkward swing though. To Martin. That's it. Off balance swing. All Kyle has to do is just get one good ground ball and get and turn two. Great ratio of balls to strikes for Loaf. Three to one. About the importance of balance hitting. Notice that Andrew Jones very off balance. He yes. strike out to end the game last night, and and now we know why. Knee surgery. Uh, but he's been for a year plus. He's been pulling off of everything. Two two the count, and it's an inside <laughs> move, and he fooled everybody, including his, his middle infield. 
And right before then, Kennedy had kind of jockeyed towards the bag. And Kyle picked up on that and then spins backwards, but Kennedy was moving back to his defensive position. I like the reaction of Pierre. He jumped up in the air kind of like a cartoon character, like, whoa, you got me. And yet he was able to react and get back to the bag. Yadier Molina doing something very smart here, Al, going out to the mound to talk to Kyle Loach after that didn't work. And there has been other issues just to make sure he's once again. It's like you're right here sit there and say, well, wait a minute. You know, I have him dead to rights if my guy's there. And, you know, that's not your job. You kept him close. Focus on this pitch. 2-2 two -two is the pitch to Russell Martin. This ball hit on the ground to third. Gloss is only going to have one play, and that is to get Martin at first base. The Dodgers runners advance. Pierre to third, Ethier to second. But I'll take that out any day. Doesn't get the double play he wanted, but Dodgers with a couple runners aboard. It's time for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts night at the ballpark. That'll be Thursday, May 29th. All Scouts and their family and friends will be able to purchase discounted tickets, and all Scouts will receive a special Cardinals patch. For details, visit stlcardinals.com or call 314-345-9500. Here's a situation. You have first base open. You've got a future Hall of Famer. But he is struggling. And you've got to lead. Yeah, and I mean, he's hitless in his last 13 at bats. The last 15 games, he's hitting well under 100. He's gone six straight games without an extra base hit and just won in his last 16 games. I tell you so when you don't, don't give in to him, but you know. I tell you when you don't want to pitch to Jeff Kent, that's when the bases are loaded. He's, he can hit some grand slams. And that it's hit home runs, it's hit doubles. And there's a slider. That's a pitch. High. Yeah, but that's a, that's not a very good pitch right yeah. there. And that's something you start paying attention to when you get to this stage of the game. Your your pitch counts getting up there near the mid 90s, and you start elevating your pitches. Do the breaking balls flatten out, lose their tilt? 1-1 one, one pitch is there's a good slider yeah. that's got good break to it but the indicators are this inning with Loesch that he's tiring a bit a couple of bad pitches this inning but really could be out of this inning and Aaron Miles been able to make a play at the short not an easy play again for no. Miles and and he's right at his average innings pitch five and two thirds right now. 2-1 to count, and Kent laces this one foul. Boy, hit that ball hard. Got it in just far enough that the only thing you could do with it was pull it foul. More activity in the Cardinal bullpen. They're all standing. Milling around. And yeah, the third time through the order there. First two times to the order, he really can contains them, but pretty much tells you he's basically a six inning pitcher. A lot of those around now. Oh, yeah. 2 2 the pitch. Ball hit high to left field. I think he got under that just a tad as Ankiel makes the play in deep left center field. I think Loesch got away with one, but another zero on the board. Cardinals lead four to nothing. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, you do not want to miss the Big 12 championship game right here on FSN as Texas will take on the winner of the Baylor-Kansas State game, which is going on right now with Kansas State leading 3-2 in the bottom of the sixth inning. That's the Big 12 championship game right here on FSN. Aaron Miles leads off for the Cardinals in the seventh inning. He's bounced out twice, and Brad Penny still in this ball game. Today's hot pitch, Kyle Loesch. Well, Jeff Kent, the final pitch, brought to you by Hardy's. And Paul had a little run. It was upstairs, but it was just high enough that he got underneath it, hit a long way, but it didn't sound like it was crisp. The ball was four inches lower. Yeah. Oh, well, four inches lower. And uh, it's a different story. It's a three yeah, one run, run, one run ball game. One run home run. 
Miles at 323 going coming into this game down to 317 but it is our long Hyundai long drive inning and Andy Tayan is our recipient today if the Cardinals hit a home run in the seventh inning he will qualify for a Hyundai Sonata drawing in September. Got Miles Molina and Loesch to do it. All you have to do is go to a Hyundai dealership and register for that drawing. Well, you Andy guys Tayan did it. They, they Why can't you? you? Well, I'm talking about you, Rick. <laughs> Where do I sign up? Miles bounces out. 4 3. You, know, you talk about that Penny's stay allowed to stay in this game. Well, yeah, one of the things sure is he's four. been struggling the point. They got Terry Glow went seven innings last night. You know his pitch count still was relatively low for a big guy. But I think Joe's trying to send a message that you, know, you guys, guys need to keep yeah. on going. You know I've got faith in you. You're fine. You know you had a bad inning. We're going to correct that. He's done a nice job since that third inning. Retired six straight. Ten of his last 11 Cardinal hitters, and he faces Molina. Fouls one into the dirt. One and one on Yachty. Yachty is struck out and bounced out. I mentioned Yachty does not strike out very often. Penny has four strikeouts, and there's some action in the Dodger bullpen. Hong Chi Kuo, the left hand. Made a few starts for them. We got a lefty in our bullpen. Has the floors. It's with the shrubbery down there in the bullpen. I don't remember seeing that. I never had that. Yeah, we never had that before. Molina fouls it off. You can barely see the pitchers out there. <laughs> in fact, they're hiding. It is Randy, Randy Flores. Randy throwing. <laughs> That's decoying everybody. <laughs> well, I've never seen that. Break One, two, the count to Molina. Bounce to third. Nice play by DeWitt. High, but in time to get Molina. Two outs for the third. You know, the entire time that I came to Dodger Stadium, if you were out in the bullpen and you needed to go to the restroom, you opened up that back door and you went out into where the bleacher fans. You went to the bathroom with all the bleacher fans. Interesting experience. <laughs> so I guess you got another place out there now with the trees. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's Jack in the Box license plate frame night. It'll be Friday, May 30th, Al. Cardinals are playing the Pirates. 25,000 fans, age 16 and up. You receive a Cardinals themed license plate frame courtesy of Jack in the Box. Brian Barton pinch hits for tickets the Jack in the Box license plate frame night. All you need to do is call 314-345-9000 or visit stlcardinals.com. Brian's done a nice job as a pinch hitter. Six for 19. Tough to catch up to that breaking ball from Penny who started to get a little bit more command of his off speed pitches as the game has progressed. Brian native of Los Angeles and he took part in the RBI program as a youth reviving baseball in the inner cities. Kyle Loesch's evening is done. Barton takes the fastball high six innings for Loesch no runs. Scatters six hits. Didn't walk him in. Strikes out five. A lot of strikes. Good pitch on the inside corner. Brian Barton doesn't like the call, but Brad Penny does. Dodgers hit the seven. Our Jack in the Box game recap here from Dodger Stadium as the Cardinals lead four to nothing. A chilly night in LA. Cardinals got all the offense they needed in the third inning. RBI hits from Duncan Pujols and Ankeel, and Kyle Loesch has been outstanding. Good defense behind him. 
as double plays have been turned and plays have been made by Albert Pujols to give the Cardinals that four nothing lead and Kyle's Moshe's day is through as Randy Flores takes over the left hander will face Loney Kemp and DeWitt for the Dodgers here in the seventh. Randy picked up his ninth hole last Saturday. He's got his tenth hole on the season. He got that one on Monday night in San Diego. 1 0 on the year. The best statistics for Randy is in his previous 19 games, he's retired the first batter 17 times. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Chevrolet as Flores starts off Loney with a fastball for strike one as Turris takes over at shortstop and Aaron Miles moves to second base. So Aaron's a little more comfortable now. And I think if your manager Tony LaRusso you're probably more comfortable with your former gold lover playing shortstop late in a four nothing game. Sure. And you know you get that lead and you turn on your defense. Miles offense has been terrific. Oh unbelievable. And usually you know, if Aaron gets one hit he's going to get a multi hit game. He's had seven four hit games in the last three years which is more than Albert's. Had. Isn't that incredible. Yeah. And that's playing as a part time player too. I still if I'm going to draft though I think I take Albert over Miles over, over Aaron. No. No offense intended. Dodger first baseman Loney batting against the left hander Flores taps it foul. I guess it depends on if you want to keep your job or not. Yeah, I'd take Albert over just about anybody in the game at this point. You'd be hard pressed to think of many more players that you'd put in the same category or close to it. He's got great years behind him and great years ahead of him. One two pitch pretty good slider just misses Loney. Somehow manages to hold off swinging on that. He was caught looking in the first, bounced out in the fourth inning. The 2 2 pitch to Loney, right down central. Good slider from Randy Flores, and we have one out here in the seventh. Uh, the slider is his big pitch, and when you can make pitches like this, frees a lot of lefties. And watch Loney goes up, whoops, knee buckles, and just walk back to the dugout. He knew it. He got me. Well, he knew it, and we know that it's Coca Cola Deerberg's Go Green Bag Night on Saturday, May 31st. 25,000 fans, ages 16 and up, will receive an eco friendly tote bag. Compliments of Coca Cola and Deerberg's. For ticket information, call 314 345 9000. Or you can visit us online at stlcardinals.com. That's Coca Cola Deerberg's Go Green Bagman. Another breaking ball from Flores, probably his best pitch yes. to Matt Kemp, who struck out twice. Yeah. Randy, so much of his success depends on his ability to locate that slider. At times early in his career, that was. Hard hit to the former Gold Glover, deep in the hole, low throw. Albert, he manages to scoop the ball, and it's two outs here in the seventh inning. This copyright telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated. Very express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Very weird to see a ball boy running out on the field during the action to chase down a beach ball. It's Dodger Stadium for you. <laughs> I know, but the ball was being put in play. He just sprinted out towards left field with the wall. Funniest thing I've ever seen in baseball is a pitch being made with the right fielder, Dave Winfield, leaning over the stands talking to a fan. While the pitch was being made, out. They, they thought they were going to come into play. No, it didn't. The pitch was—I think it was fouled off. And then he realized that the game had restarted. He thought they were going to make a pitching change, so he went off the field to talk to a friend. Was leaning over the railing, 
as a right fielder when but, a pitch was. Made. But that's the responsibility of the pitcher to, you know, look around and make sure all your defenders are set. Certainly, pitching's tough enough to not have your right fielder in position. You'd think the catcher would notice that too. Yeah, or the umpires or somebody. But Blake Dewitt, one for two. In the 70s, you know, you'd have Morgana run out on the field, and I remember Bandit. I remember Morgana. Really? Would like to elaborate? That's all I'm going to say. Somebody run out on the field in Boston. Or his walks to it with two outs. You hate those two out walks. Guy jumped into our bullpen out and said he was going out on the field at second base. That's exactly what he did. Moon the left fielder, Jim Rice. <laughs> and then got chased down by a, a, an awful lot of security people. Yes. And he'll never do that again. Dave Duncan out to talk to Randy Flores. Russ Springer getting loose out there in the foliage for the Cardinals. I can see him. Looks dark back where the pitchers are. Though now, you, now you can't use pine tar, but I wonder if you can use sap. Yeah, there's evergreens out there. Or the type of hue, evergreens or something like that out there. Shin Lung Hu. They were telling us earlier about how they, you know. Dodger bullpen had a whole bunch of cheaters. 1988. 88. Pretty yeah. good ball club yeah. in 88. You were, you a lot of pine tar going. You were in that bullpen, weren't you? Yes, I was. And Jay Howell, during the National League Championship Series, was kicked out of the game for using pine tar. Can you believe that, Al? Somebody cheating in the game of baseball. As who is taken care of with one pitch? Cardinals lead four to nothing through seven. Cardinals baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. And by Chevrolet. See for yourself. Shop and compare at STLChevy.com. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. The lights of Los Angeles. As the Cardinals lead four to nothing, game two of this three game series. They won here last night. And have gotten great pitching from Kyle Loesch and Randy Flores through seven. As Cesar as Turris will take his first plate appearance. As we're on to the eighth inning and there's a new Cardinal reliever. Our Chevy called to the bullpen and it's Han Chi Kuo. Well, appearing for his 11th time. He has made three starts. And you can see the good ERA. He's got racked up some strikeouts with that 3-1 record. And this tourist will be the first man he faces, and then the top of the order. Broken bat foul. We'll have to get some more lumber. Quo, one of just five Taiwanese born players in Major League Baseball. Four of those five actually spent time playing with the Dodgers. You mentioned how much the Dodgers have been in the international market. Think of Chan Ho Park, you think of Nomo, Hideo Nomo. You also wonder how they get through a season without an interpreter or two. And I'm sure they have the interpreters. And of course, you have such an Oriental uh, presence here in the Los Angeles area that, you know, it's a heck of a way to sell tickets. Such an ethnic uh, melting pot here. Really is. Matter of fact, sometimes uh, you, know, you have trouble finding people speak English. Anybody speak Hungarian around here? Yes. How's your Hungarian minor league player, by the way? Yeah, uh, he's coming to visit me next week in St. Louis. They're getting ready to go back to Hungary. The Cardinals are number one in Hungary. Dodgers are number one in the Orient. 
And they had presence in the Caribbean a long, long time. Oh, they did. No question about that. It paid dividends for this organization. 3-1 to count to his tourists, and he hits his ball on the ground to another Taiwanese major leaguer. And who throws him out? Remind you one more time, tomorrow, 1 o'clock, the Big 12 championship game on FSN. A lot of upsets in that tournament. Texas has made it to the final game. Baylor and K-State battling it out for that last spot in the finals. Here's an updated score, 3-2 to two, Kansas State. Now that game is in the bottom of the seventh inning. Don't want to miss that. 1 o'clock tomorrow on FSN. Skip Schumacher the batter against the left-hander Quo. Schumacher 0 for 2. He did walk and score in the third inning. I've been to Taiwan, but I've been to Korea and Japan. I realize, I think at some point, that it, it is a World Series now when the players play in October. Literally is a World Series as Schumacher bounces out. Harmlessly, 5-3. There was a time when it was just, we all know, the game of baseball was just white Americans at one point. Sure. And Jackie I mean, Robinson. So critical Ludwig. to the Dodgers' success. Ludwig will, this is a double fold. You, you put it in a right handed bat, it replaces Duncan, and you also put it in a defensive play. But he hadn't done enough yet to uh, warrant playing this game. Of course, we're being a little <laughs> facetious. facetious. Yes, we are. By the way, you were right, Al. I did a recheck on the numbers as Ludwig hits and takes a curveball for a strike. I missed a couple of intentional walks that count as plate appearances. So if he hits here, if he can hit 1.1 times in this game. 1.1. <laughs> 1. 1. Yeah. <laughs> then he'll be eligible. To stay in the, in the, in the league leaders, right. you know. Maybe he hits and stays in the game. Maybe the Cardinals bat around. Well, I told him, I said, you're going to do something special. And he goes, I'm not in the lineup. I said, well, what about when you pinch hit late in this ball game? Maybe you're going to get us a game winner. And he goes, and he was smart. Show you his UNLV education. He said, well, I hope I don't hit because, you know, it means we're doing so well. We keep our position players out there, the guys out there, all pulling for each other. And I said, yeah, but it's going to be such a lopsided game that somebody will be just worn out and you'll need to you'll need a breather. Let's see how right you are for him doing something special. He's down in the count now, one and two. Good fastball from the left-hander. Evens the count at two. And that's one of the things where Tony is, you know, there's some guys that can't hit coming off the bench. Ludwig can hit coming off the bench, and he can hit in the lineup. Matter of fact, last year he was more productive coming off the bench than he was when he, was, he started the game. I'm not sure you want to have that uh, tag on you. No, but this year he's dispelled it. 2-2 two -two pitch to Ludwig is hit on the ground to second. A lot of ground balls in this game. Good pitching going on. Only 10 hits in this game. Some are getting ready to leave. But not you and I, Al. A couple more innings left. Cardinals lead. More to nothing. Kyle McClellan is the new Cardinal pitcher as he takes over for Randy Flores here in the bottom of the eighth inning. A nice interview with Brent Stover and Kyle before the game, and now he gets a chance to pitch here in tonight's contest. He'll face the ninth hitter and then Pierre and Ethier here in the eighth inning. Kyle with 13 saves, tops in the major leagues. I mean, holds, excuse me, holds, not saves. Not just four runs his past 17 games. Had a little bout with control problems, but recently we think he's ironed those out. First pitch from McClellan is high and away as Young. Delwyn Young is the pinch hitter for the Dodgers. And he hits the ball on the ground in second, broke his bat. A lot of ground balls out, a lot of defensive at-bats in this game. Oh, Good I think, pitching. I think it's outstanding after the Cardinals 
get four in the third. Let me see a whole bunch ground balls. Been a nice, well-paced game. Not many opportunities for either side. And as the pitching has dominated, it's usually what you would expect from a Dodger club, and the Cardinals are pitching right there with them and actually have a better ERA. Amazing the job that Kyle McClellan has done this year. And really become the eighth inning guy. I think he's almost moved into that role. I don't want to say exclusively, but he certainly earned it as it's strike one to Pierre. Well, now that Franklin is your pseudo closer, I, I think you're, you know, he is the best one for this situation. And, and you know, there may be at times where they prefer to bring in Springer when there's guys on base and let the younger guys, you know, start the inning. What about Chris Perez? Well, Chris Perez, you know, it might be interesting to see if he's given the ninth inning tonight when Franklin, you remember. Line drive the gloss off his glove, not able to handle the hot shot. Looks like he might have had trouble seeing that ball. I can see he's playing in on the grass and line drive and kind of eats him up. Scored an E5. That's Gloss's fourth there on the year. He and his tourists are both second best coming in this game statistically in the National League defensively, percentage wise. Ball was hit hard off yes. the bat of Pierre. Andre Ethier, the batter. I was going to say that, you know, Franklin, remember, he started the ninth inning, then he had over an hour rain delay. Walked a couple guys, but got finally got out of it by striking out the side. So, you know, you could make a case that you would be one of those situations where you give Perez a ninth inning. It's not a safe situation, so it might be a situation where you say, Let's see how he handles the ninth inning in a non safe situation. What about keeping McClellan in and pitch two innings? That, what do you think that, about that? That that could be a good option with uh, you know tomorrow, you know, being the day game. I like that idea too. Line drive right at the left fielder. A couple of hard hit balls here by the Dodgers in the eighth inning. As Ethier lines out to Schumacher, who's moved to left field. Ludwig has taken over in right field for defensive purposes. And I guess McClellan will take that, even though that ball was hit hard. Al, it's an out. No such thing as a hard hit out, is there? If you're a pitcher, <laughs> you don't think that way. All just good pitches. <laughs> Minimizing my pitch, throw, pitch into contact, coach. There you go. Big swing from Martin. Strike one. You know, I've never liked that. I know you like it, Al, but at the pitching the contact thing, I just I can't get that in my head that that's a that that's a way you pitch. I understand the theory is you don't want to walk people, but contact usually to me meant backing up a base. <laughs> oh, one pitch is hit deep to left field, but it's going to hang up here in this cool Los Angeles night, and Schumacher puts it away, and Kyle McClellan. Gets through the eighth inning. One more to go. Fernando looking up. So are the Cardinals. Cardinals lead four to nothing. We're on to the ninth inning. Scott Proctor will be the third Dodger pitcher of the evening. The right-hander takes over for Hong Chi Kuo and Brad Penny, the starter. And Proctor, who's been in 21 games, ERA over five, is part of a Dodgers staff. That has done pretty well, probably not as well as you might expect in 2008, as Albert Pujols will be the first hitter for Proctor. The Dodgers pitching staff, sixth in the National League in earned run average. Thought they might be a little better than that, Al. Well, I think a lot of it had to do with Derek Lowe and Brad Penny struggling a little bit. And Chris the Perez. Bullpen and everything else. Chris Perez is warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. Beautiful Dodger Stadium. Isn't it magnificent? And you like the changes they've made? Put $70 million in renovations to this facility. And it opened up right around 60, 1960. I think that's right. I came know the out first couple of years yeah, they came played out, for the Coliseum. Came out in 
58, I believe. And played the first couple of years at the Coliseum. They had a game there as part of this 50th anniversary. And you know, a spring training game. I think it was the Dodgers in Boston. They drew 115,000 <laughs> to the Los Angeles Coliseum. Some of the Dodger faithful have Probably, left, you know, but I think a lot of them are here to see Albert you know, play. You, don't you, you think? Uh, yeah, you don't remember some of the jobs that collegians would get athletes. One strike pitch to Albert Ball. John Arnett, All-American, great uh, running back for USC. He had the, he had one of the best jobs. He, his job was guarding the Los Angeles Coliseum, making sure no one stole it. <laughs> oh boy! One one pitch to Albert is low. And and I'm I, I think I was told. It sounds too, like an NCAA violation. To well, me. no, no, not really. But I, I was told that if he, he was really sure no one would steal it tonight, he didn't necessarily have to show up. Uh huh. I guess you call that work. Great job if you can get it. <laughs> if you're an All-American. I'm not sure I like the job of having to pitch to Albert Pujols, but that's what Scott Proctor has in front of him, and he's behind him two and one. A two one pitch to Albert. Good breaking ball. Fools Albert. Don't see that very often. Now Ricky Horton, come on. Don't you want to have the challenge of facing somebody like Albert Pujols? I know you're a competitor. Yeah, oh yeah. Actually, I, I don't want it now. No, you probably would want it now because it, you're way below the hitting zone. Yeah, now. that's right. <laughs> well, he couldn't wait. These are the at bats you remember if you're Scott Proctor. If you're Albert Pujols, it's just another right hander out there. Although he does study pitchers and he knows what they throw, he watches a lot of film and really is a smart hitter, not just a good hitter. But for a guy like Proctor, this is this is still a thrill to pitch to Pujols and to get him out. Is who comes up with it? Takes care of Albert. Well, that's it. Scott Proctor's been a very good setup man for Joe Torrey and the Yankees, and now he was kind of pitched last night trying to get back on track. Mm -hmm. But you're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you, you have a chance to sit there and say, okay, maybe I'm not as good as Albert Pujols, but this one on one matchup, yeah. I beat him. Let's see what he does with Rick Ankiel. And now what about you what what guy do you think of in terms of that kind of challenge is there ever a hitter that you stepped off the mound and said I can't believe I'm pitching to this guy and he fouls it back out to it. Well there's one guy that scared me. I think of you as a guy who would ever get scared. Well I was swinging a bat and I looked in the mirror and the reflection <laughs> scared me. Yeah, I could see that. No, nah, but because you always would sit there you know I mean I used to relish the challenge of trying to create a one on one battle with every hitter. Now, whether it was Willie Stargell, you know, Reggie Jackson, guys like that, you didn't have to manufacture it. It was already ready made. You know, but I faced Aaron, faced Mays, McCovey, and, you know, Kaczynski, Schmidt, Stremski, Rod Carew, you know, go right on down the line. And, and you know, there were some that were a little more memorable and a lot. Some were more fun than others, but you still lo love the challenge. 1-1 one, one pitch to Ankiel, breaking ball for a strike. Rod Carew wouldn't, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, well, many wouldn't have 3,000 hits without my you contribution. Did you get a few of those? Two. Good for you. Uh, get must have got him out a few times, too. And Rick Ankiel is out as he swings at that high fastball you talked about out of the strike zone. Not sure if he's pitching a contact or not, but this is what Sandy Kopak said. Our quote of the day: "I became a good pitcher when I stopped trying to make him miss the ball and started to try and make him hit it." And that's from Sandy Kopak. One of the nicest men in the game of baseball I have ever met. Well, that's that's one guy that I wish I would have. I've never met him. You've never met Sandy no, Kopak? No. You know, I was never around. You know, Dodger Town like like you or something like that. He and Honeycutt are very close. Unbelievable gentleman. Oh, well, I knew that the pitchers part. in spring training, and, and there was a time where he would be working. At, I recall a specific moment where he was working with me on throwing a curveball, and I realized I'm talking to Sandy Koufax here for goodness sakes. Yeah, just an amazing gentleman, very humble. 
New Drysdale and play with Osteen and uh, Johnny Padres and Paranowski and all those guys. Sutton, obviously. Brendan Ryan, the hitter. But then sometimes things get shattered. You know, like when I came into the Cardinal organization, the first time I went to instructional league, the great Warren Spahn and his 363 wins, the most ever by a left hander. Yeah. You know, was coming to instructional league. And I thought Warren Spahn's going to help me. And? And all I want to do is change my motion so I'd have a better pickoff move. Right. And then I had a chance later on to play for him at AAA, and he was the worst manager I ever had. Sometimes pitchers, there is a thing that pitchers don't make good managers. And sometimes the best players don't make the best hitting oh. coaches, or because that's why you look because at they can't like stand, uh, they can't accept mediocrity or, or the average player. I think that's one of the things that makes Joe Torre so special. He was such a good player, and he's been such a good man. Brendan Ryan, you wonder if Troy Gloss, that vision issue on the line drive last inning. That's why he's out of this game as strike three on the outside corner takes care of Brendan Ryan. Sandy Koufax, the high leg kick. Cardinals lead four to nine. Back at Dodger Stadium for the bottom half of the ninth. After the game, U.S. Cellular Cardinals live. Bernie Miklas in studio to break it down with Pat Paris. They will definitely talk Kyle Loesch and another great start from Kyle here tonight. I'll have a live player interview on the field. Tony La Russa and plenty of postgame sound inside the clubhouse. U.S. Cellular Cardinals live. Gentlemen. Thanks, Brent, and I'm sure there'll be some talk about the guy closing the game for the Cardinals. Chris Perez will take over in the ninth inning. Now we thought we might see him tonight, and it's always fun to watch this guy who's got such a big upside in that quarter ball. Well, he pitched in yesterday's ball game, and talking with Joe Torrey before the game, he took note of a very live arm. Pitched two-thirds of an inning. Had a couple of balls hit relatively hard, but you know Joe said he was impressed with him. With Ryan Franklin pitching the inning, the ninth inning last night with an hour rain delay in between that inning, you figured that, and it's a non-safe situation. It's a perfect opportunity to bring Perez back-to-back -back games and let him pitch the ninth inning and get those handshakes at the end. And it's the middle of the lineup that he'll be facing: Jeff Kent, Loney, and Kemp. Kent is 0 for 3. There'll be opportunities where maybe, you know, Tony says Ryan Franklin is wiry strong, may not be able to pitch three or four days in a row. And so Perez will get save opportunities as he, you know, is gets acclimated to not only the major leagues, but the pressure of pitching late in the game. Just missed with his first two deliveries. You almost get the sense that the Cardinal bullpen is evolving into what those Rolls are going to be long term as this ball is laced in the right field. Lead off hit for the Dodgers. And we're not going to go quietly here in the ninth inning. Jeff Kent picks up his first hit. It's the Dodgers seven. And let's see how he handles a little adversity well, that's here. It. Right I mean, so everybody trying to project him as your instant closer are not considering the fact what if, what if he goes out there and struggles? You can lose a guy. By bringing him up to the, it's, it's not the norm to have a guy come to the big leagues and stay like Albert Pujols, or stay like Vince Coleman. You know the shuttle going back and forth is more the norm, and so you just have to, you know, just have to Anthony Reyes about that. So there's times well, where you just kind of get your feet wet. And he really hasn't struggled as a professional player, no. and that's one thing that's <laughs> always been taught, Al. And you and I have heard this a thousand times. A guy should fail for the first time in the minor leagues, not yes, the big leagues. Because some guys can't recover. Now with his arm, you would be shocked if if he let it get to him. Well, you got a guy like Derek Turnbow has a pretty good arm. And he seems to be headed south, and you don't project that that will happen to Chris Perez. Well, you you know, I mean you can't predict what, what happened with Izzy after all the success he's had. So. Good fastball at the knees, 95 miles an hour. And Loney, who struck out looking twice, takes another call strike. And He's this behind in the count one and two. Kind of the surprising thing is a lot of times these guys have, have had very poor at bats. 
the Dodger hitters. Strike three good fastball from Perez and he takes care of James Loney. And it's time for our Budweiser great player of the game. <laughs> and I think we'll go with the Cardinal starter. Got Kyle Lowe. Kyle Lowe's pitch. Six innings of six hit baseball. Did not walk a man. He strikes out five. But you throw a shutout baseball out there and you dominate and made things look pretty easy. And let's hope he gets back in his winning ways. First win in May. And his first win since late April. Pretty good movement on some of those pitches, too, we saw from Loesch. I think between him and Pinheiro, I almost see them as the same kind of guy. They've got good movement and throw a lot of strikes. They do well. And the Cardinals need both of them to do that. Yeah, but, the, you know, the one thing, too, is that's why it's important to have a guy like Wayne Wright that can go a little deeper into right. a game because, you know, six innings is good enough. And when you start going less than that, you put the burden on the bullpen. Matt Kemp, the center fielder, takes a strike at the knees. Perez staying low, Al. He didn't get a couple of calls early on to Jeff Kent. Kent laces the base hit to right field. He also he strikes out Loney. With his velocity, though, he can pitch up in the zone on top of it. Let's see where he goes with the one-two pitch. Up or down? Sometimes, you know, you see so many fastballs from him that you hope he doesn't lose that good slider. He'll need both of them. Yes, he will. Fastball away. The 2 2 pitch. Ball three. Things getting a little interesting here in the ninth inning for Chris Perez and the Cardinals trying to protect. Kyle Loesch, pitcher of record. Six shutout innings for Loesch. Randy Flores pitched the seventh. McClellan the eighth. Nice and easy. Just relax. Fastball away. The 3 2. Fouled off. A little late swing by Matt Kemp. 98 miles an hour on our gun. Kemp just protecting the plate right there. It almost looked like that ball was by him when he started to swing. Well, as you know, too. Uh, that's part of the art of hitting is you get a good pitcher's pitch and just have that ability to foul it off to extend it waiting for the mistake or in this case a mistake or a ball four fastball away Ooh. Ooh. and not only did that come in in high octane but that foul off and right into the mask of Molina Molina being awful tough that looked like that ball smoked him right Man. in the face mask and he's not even flinching. No you talk about a whiplash. I guess that's probably the closest thing to describe a foul ball like that in the mask is, is almost a whiplash. Makes you realize a guy like Mike Matheny sure what he ended up going through. Yeah. Just Three two. Again. Struck him out. High hard one from Chris Perez, his second strikeout of the inning as he blows away. Matt Kemp up and in. Woo. Well, I'm not sure he wanted it there, but after so many pitches down in the zone, that pitch a hitter cannot lay off and he can't center it. He stayed down, 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 he down and he ladder. changed the eye level. And that's that pitch out of the strike zone that hitters see well but they can't catch up to it and they can't center it they either swing and miss or they pop it up Blake DeWitt is the Dodgers last hope there's that slider yeah first pitch slider taken for a strike can't the runner at first he also has a very good curveball but you know a little reluctant to throw it I think that was a slider yep after all those fastballs, and then all of a sudden you come out and throw paint to paint it with two sliders. Witt's going, okay, well, I tried that approach looking for fastball. Now I just got to guard the plate. You better keep looking for the fastball. Get the fastball and wants it up. 0-2 the count. 
And he struck him out, and this game is over. Three straight strikeouts for Chris Perez. Closes it out for the Cardinals as they've won the first two games here in Los Angeles. Excellent pitching performance. Just seven hits. Al, all around, well played game for the Cardinals. Very well played. And, you know, I mean, a lot of things accomplished. Lowe's gets a win. You know, they had the big fourth four run third inning bullpen does their job and especially Perez gets a ninth inning in those handshakes Cardinals win four to nothing we'll be back with more from Los Angeles all right the game is over with a Cardinal victory I know it's getting late not as late as last night but Bernie and I are standing by to bring you US Cellular Cardinals live Bernie your thoughts on this one well the Cardinals are in a first place tie with the Cubs and what a great road trip so far four out of five with uh, the finale tomorrow at Dodger Stadium. And we're going to talk more about that coming up with Bernie Miklas. Also, Kyle Loesch taking the mound tonight, looking for his first win ever at Dodger Stadium. We're going to break down his winning performance tonight on the mound. Plus, the Cardinals are on the verge of their, and actually got their second winning road trip of the season. What's been the key? And we'll take you inside the Cardinals clubhouse at Chavez Ravine and bring you Tony La Russa's postgame comments. It's Saturday night, and it's all right because U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live as your late-night fix. Stay with us on FSN Midwest. <laughs>